Hello everyone, this is David Collins from Ann Arbor Guitars. When you get into working on guitar electronics, the sheer volume of different choices you have with potentiometers, capacitors, values, tapers, wiring schemes, uh, can simply be a bit overwhelming for a lot of people. What we are going to do is start a series of videos in which we hope to clarify a lot of these uh, influences of these components by breaking them down into individual parts, looking at them one at a time, how and why they affect your tone and the function of the pots, and then in later videos going through to combine some of these variables to see how they interact with each other. Uh, in order to do this, we are using a Faber Acoustical Signal Generator and Spectrum Analyzer, uh, running a sweep tone through a couple of, um, couple of exciter coils that we made, uh, just one coil over each pickup coil, uh, and these are uh, Gibson 500T, some very hot uh, pickups that we're using, which allow us the flexibility of showing a wide range of impedances and the different electronic effects when applied to different, uh, different impedance pickups by switching between uh, series, split, and parallel for each of the coils. Uh, to start with, I'd like to cover a little bit of uh, the basics of electronics and, and how and why things work the way they do. Within each coil, there are a number of electrical properties that influence the frequency response. Uh, primarily, we're looking at inductance, capacitance, and resistance. This constitutes what's known as an LCR circuit, L being the symbol for inductance. Now, when you have an LCR circuit, what you'll typically find is a resonant peak, a natural peak in the resonance somewhere along the frequency response range. Right now, I have uh, one pickup with a uh, split coil, we're looking at a single, roughly seven and a half kilo ohm coil. Um, a single coil and uh, with no potentiometers engaged to it, just the coil running to a buffer and then to the spectrum analyzer. And we have a frequency, uh, we have a resonant frequency of around three and a half kilohertz as it sits right now. Um, now, as we engage the guitar electronics, the volume and the tone controls, the capacitors, and plug it into the amplifier, we are altering that LCR circuit. And in doing that, we're going to change the resonant uh, peak. We're going to change both the um, amplitude, the frequency, and where the treble roll-off uh, starts to really come in. Um, so to start with, let's see what happens as we engage the potentiometers, in this case two 500 kilo ohm potentiometers and you can see the resonant peak stayed roughly in the same frequency but it dropped notably in amplitude. Again, pick up run directly to the uh, analyzer and with the potentiometers engaged. Uh, you can see a bit of a difference right there. Now um, in this video we're just going to look at values of the potentiometers when the volume and tone are all the way up on 10. This is about one of the simplest and most consistent things you can change in your guitar that, that yields predictable results. Uh, the simple rule is the higher the value of the resistors uh, or the potentiometers in this case, the greater the treble response and the higher amplitude of the resonant peak. We switch down to 250 kilo ohm and you can see we've knocked that resonant peak back down uh, just a bit, but enough to make a difference. Um, again, there's 500k, 250k. Uh, drop down even further, down to 100k, and you can see we have uh, lost a good portion of the peak altogether. Um, what is happening here is referred to as loading. Uh, by loading, that means we are putting a resistor or a load across the coil. We are connecting one end of the coil and the other, with a resistor and the lower the value of that resistor the more it allows signal to pass across the greater the load so with potentiometer value simple rule the greater the load which means lower value the more you cut on the trebles now let's take a minute go back up to 500 uh, k pots and see what happens when we switch this to series in which case we're running a 15 kilo ohm pickup and you can see that resonant peak dropped significantly 
in uh, frequency. Now it did tend to jump a little bit in amplitude. That's in part because we are pumping a signal through two coils now in, instead of one. Um, but all else things being equal, the one thing you can reliably predict is that resonant peak and the beginning of the treble roll off will be cut down in the frequency range. Let's go up to parallel now and you can see we've moved that resonant peak much further up. Now we're running about three and a quarter kilo ohms uh, pickup resistance. So 15 kilo ohms, three and a quarter kilo ohms. And you can begin to see how uh, potentiometers came to be used in the applications they are, where when we have a lower impedance, lower resistance pickup with a higher resonant peak, you tend to find more manufacturers and players choosing lower value potentiometers like 250k to cut off a little bit of that extra treble that comes through with the lower resistance, uh, lower impedance pickups. Higher impedance pickups, we're already losing a lot of that treble uh, with the signal to start with, just starting from the coil. So they tend to go a little bit higher impedance, or excuse me, higher resistance on the potentiometers so that we can stay, uh, so we can retain uh, what treble we do have left a little bit better. Now to take this to extremes, we could go up to a one mega ohm volume and switch to a no load tone pot. And you can see we brought our resonant peak and the, uh, the treble response higher than before. Um, even if we disengage the volume pot altogether now, the response is subtle. There's not a whole lot there. Um, so in practical terms, one meg is about as high as you'll typically find, as high as is worth going on a potentiometer for a volume control. For a tone control, uh, people will often employ a no load pot which just disengages it from the circuit completely when turned all the way up to 10. Now let's go ahead and give them a listen and see what difference you can hear. Uh, right now, 15 kilo ohm uh, bridge pickup with two 500k pots. There's the 250. And you can really hear that extra shimmer, that extra high end that still comes through with the 500k pots. Definitely makes a little bit of difference. Let's move up uh, one step further and go up to a one meg volume and a no load tone pot. difference, uh, certainly noticeable difference, but uh, the vast majority of the change usually tends to come early on in the potentiometer values in the 100 to 500k range. Take it down to 100k and we're really pushing quite low because we end up with a combined 50k parallel resistance when we put the two pots together. <laughs> when it really starts to affect not only the high end, the high frequencies, and the resonant peak, but the overall volume. value, the less the highs are attenuated, the more they make it through to your amp. Now let's shift over to parallel on the pickup with a lower impedance, a higher resonant peak, more highs delivered from the pickup to begin with, and see how it responds to the different uh, pot values. Pretty bright to begin with at 250k. Let's go straight up to the extreme end, one mag volume and no load tone pot. And you can see it kind of starts to make your ears bleed a little bit. Uh, back down to um, 500k. Let's 
Still pretty bright at 250, but going lower just does a little bit better to shave off that really harsh high edge. Just takes off a little bit, but it's enough to make a difference. All right, I hope that demonstration was helpful in clarifying uh, that aspect of it. Uh, please tune in to our next videos uh, where uh, we're going to start talking about the tone and the volume controls individually. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.